a. The image of God as including only personality. This theory denies that any positive determination to virtue inhid originally in man's nature, and regards man at the beginning as simply possessed of spiritual powers, perfectly adjusted to each other. This is the view of Schleiermacher, who is followed by Nietzsche, Julius Muller, and Hoffman. For the view here combated, see Schleiermacher, Chrysal. Glaub, Secretary. 60, Nietzsche, System of Christian Doctrine, 201, Julius Muller, Dopt. Of Sin, 2 colon 113-133, 350 to 357, Hoffman, Schriftby Wise, 1 colon 287-291, Bibsack, 7 colon 409-425. Julius Muller's theory of the fall in a pre-existent state makes it impossible for him to hold here that Adam was possessed of moral likeness to God. The origin of his view of the image of God renders it liable to suspicion. Flydra, Grundris, 113, the original. State of man was that of childlike innocence or morally indifferent naturalness, which had in itself indeed the possibility, Anlager, of ideal development, but in such a way that its realization could be reached only by struggle with its natural opposite. The image of God was already present in the original state, but only as the possibility, Anlager, of real likeness to God, the endowment of reason which belonged to human personality. The reality of a spirit like that of God has appeared first in the second Adam, and has become the principle of the kingdom of God. Raymond, Theology, 243, 132, is an American representative of the view that the image of God consists in mere personality. The image of God in which man was created did not consist in an inclination and determination of the will to holiness. This is maintained upon the ground that such a moral likeness to God would have rendered it impossible for man to fall, to which we reply that Adam's righteousness was not immutable, and the bias of his will toward God did not render it impossible for him to sin. Motives do not compel the will, and Adam at least had a certain power of contrary choice. E. G. Robinson, Christ. Theology, 119-122, also maintains that the image of God signified only that personality which distinguished man from the brute. Christ, he says, carries forward human nature to a higher point, instead of merely restoring what is lost. Very good, Genesis 1 verse 31, does not imply moral perfection, this cannot be the result of creation, but only of discipline and will. Man's original state was only one of untried. Innocence. Dr. Robinson is combating the view that the first man was at his creation possessed of a developed character. He distinguishes between character and the germs of character. These germs he grants that man possessed. And so he defines the image of God as a constitutional predisposition toward a course of right conduct. This is all the perfection which we claim for the first man. We hold that this predisposition toward the good can properly be called character, since it is the germ from which all holy action springs. In addition to what has already been said in support of the opposite view, we may urge against this theory the following objections. A. It is contrary to analogy, in making man the author of his own holiness. Our sinful condition is not the product of our individual wills, nor is our subsequent condition of holiness the product of anything but God's regenerating power. To hold that Adam was created undecided, would make man, as Philippi says, in the highest sense his own creator. But morally, as well as physically, man is God's creature. In regeneration it is not sufficient for God to give power to decide for good, God must give new love also. If this be so in the new creation, God could give love in the first creation also. Holiness therefore is creatable. Underived holiness is possible only in God, in its origin, it is given both to angels and men. Therefore we pray, create in me a clean heart, Psalms 51 verse 10, incline my heart unto thy testimonies, Psalms 119 verse 36. See Edwards, F. Grace, Sector 43-51, Carfton, Dogmatic, 290. If Adam's perfection was not a moral perfection, then his sin was no real moral corruption. The animus of the theory we are combating seems to be an unwillingness to grant that man, either in his first creation or in his new creation, owes his holiness to God. B. 
the knowledge of God in which man was originally created logically presupposes a direction toward God of man's affections and will, since only the holy heart can have any proper understanding of the God of holiness. Ubi caritas, ibi claritas. Man's heart was originally filled with divine love, and out of this came the knowledge of God. We know God only as we love Him, and this love comes not from our own single volition. No. One loves by command, because no one can give himself love. In Adam love was an inborn impulse, which he could affirm or deny. Compare 1 Cor 8 3, If any man loveth God, the same, God, is known by him, 1 John 4 verse 8, He that loveth not knoweth not God. See other scripture references on pages 3, 4. C. A likeness to God in mere personality, such as Satan also possesses, comes far short of answering the demands of the scripture, in which the ethical conception of the divine nature so overshadows the merely natural. The image of God must be, not simply ability to be like God, but actual likeness. God could never create an intelligent being evenly balanced between good and evil, on the razor's edge, on the fence. The preacher who took for his text Adam, where art thou, had for his first head, it is every man's business to be somewhere, for his second, some of you are where you ought not to be, and for his third, get where you ought to be, as soon as possible. A simple capacity for good or evil is, as Augustine says, already sinful. A man who is neutral between good and evil is already a violator of that law, which requires likeness to God in the bent of his nature. D. Lich, Bib Cycle, 45-84, Personality is only the basis of the divine image, it is not the image itself. Bledsoe says there can be no created virtue or viciousness. Wedden, on the will, 388, objects to this, and says rather, there can be no created moral desert, good or evil. Adam's nature as created was pure and excellent, but there was nothing meritorious until he had freely and rightly exercised his will with full power to the contrary. We add, there was nothing meritorious even then. For substance of these objections, see Philippi, Glaubenslayer, 2 346. Lessing said that the character of the Germans was to have no character. Gerty partook of this cosmopolitan characterlessness, Professor Seeley. Tennyson had Gerty in view when he wrote in the Palace of Art, I sit apart, holding. No form of creed, but contemplating all. And Gerty is probably still alluded to in the words, a glorious devil, large in heart and brain, that did love beauty only, or if good, good only for its beauty, C-A-H. Strong, the great poets and their theology, 331, Robert Browning, Christmas Eve, the truth in God's breast lies trace for trace upon ours impressed, though he is so bright, and we so dim, we are made in his image to witness him.